Welcome to another installment of Learning in Florida's Environment, the LIFE program. I'm Dr. Katherine Clements from the University of Florida IFAS, Sarasota County Extension, and we are going to do a science short today in my backyard with Miss D. Hart from Sarasota County Schools. And today we are going to talk about food chains and food webs. So let's take a walk in my backyard and see if we can find an example of a food chain happening right here. Come on over here, Dr. Catherine. Did you find something, Miss D. Hart? Yes, I found some caterpillars. Oh, let's take a look. What are they doing? The caterpillar is eating on this vine over here. Can you oh, see them? Oh, look at that. That's a really cool caterpillar. And right now it is on one of our native plants in my backyard. This is a Smilax vine. And right next to that is a grapevine. And the caterpillars will eat that. They'll eat the saw palmetto leaf. And they really like to eat these oak leaves as well, which are right down here. So caterpillars love to eat lots of different plants. And what's going to eat the caterpillar? Ooh, I don't know. I think, oh, I know, birds really like to eat caterpillars. And we have a very special kind of bird here in my backyard. It's called a Florida scrub jay. And they are actually threatened birds, which means there aren't very many of them left. And they need those caterpillars to feed their young. Young birds, just like people, need lots of protein to be healthy. And the caterpillars are full of protein for those little baby birds. So if we didn't have caterpillars, the birds wouldn't have anything to eat? Yeah, they might eat some other things, especially when they're adults. They'll eat seeds and nuts like acorns from the oak tree. But those caterpillars are a really important part of their diet and for lots of different birds. And the caterpillar is a type of insects and insects are really important, not only for birds, but for other animals like bats and frogs and all sorts of animals that eat insects as part of their food chain. If we didn't have those insects, it would really affect a lot of other animals. So insects are our friends. And if we find them in our gardens, we want to be careful and maybe we pick them off our plants, but we don't want to use too many chemicals because that might actually damage the insects and leave less food for the animals that need it. Let's see what else we see. All right, what else can we find in our backyard? I see something up there on the right. Do you see it in the bushes? Oh, what is that? I see some ears. I think it's a rabbit. I think that's an eastern cottontail rabbit. That's one of our native rabbits here in my backyard. You might see one in your backyard too. What's he eating? Oh, I think he's eating plants. He's eating some grass. What do we call animals that eat plants? They're called herbivores. Herbivores. Shh. I hear something over here. I think there's something in the bushes over here. Ah! What's that? Oh my gosh, it's a bobcat. That bobcat could eat the rabbit. The bobcat's a carnivore. And he gets his energy from eating other animals, like the rabbit. Oh, and we even call animals like the bobcat apex predators because they are at the top of their food chain. Apex is like at the top of a mountain. So bobcats are apex predators and they get their energy from rabbits. Rab and the rabbit gets his energy from the plants. Where do the plants get their energy from? Plants get their energy from the sun. They use that sunlight and they photosynthesize to make their own food. We call them producers because they are producing their own food. Oh, and producers are at the bottom of the food chain. And then because the rabbit eats the producers, he's a primary consumer. And then because the bobcat eats the rabbit, he's a secondary consumer. 
wow, what a cool food chain. We have seen two food chains in action right here in my backyard. I'm getting a little cold, Misty Heart. Should we go inside and see what we can do in there? Yes, let's go inside, please. All right, Dr. Catherine, look over here. I brought out all my stuffed animals and I thought I could try to make some food chains out of my stuffed animals. So let's see what I have. I have a little mouse and let's see, the, who's gonna eat the mouse? Oh, this snake would definitely eat that mouse. And then uh, this eagle might eat the snake. And oh, this bunny, that rabbit would definitely be a snack for the snake and oh here's a frog the frog could get eaten by this alligator oh here's a bee that's probably a nice snack for the frog i have a duck and a turtle those could be alligator snacks as well and i've got a squirrel that snake might eat the squirrel and i have a, a lobster we don't have a lobster I'm going to call him a crayfish. This is a crayfish and my otter here would definitely eat the crayfish. And I've got this bobcat. He could eat that otter. So I've got a lot of different food chains here. This is looking more like a food web. When you have a lot of different food chains that interconnect, you have a food web. Because several of these, my apex predators here, they're going to eat several different types of secondary consumers and those consumers are going to eat my little primary consumers down here. And what would happen if, what would happen if something in this food web disappeared? So what if my frog disappeared? Would that affect the rest of my food web? It would probably mean that the alligator is going to eat more of these and that we might have too many bees around. Definitely, they are all interconnected. Why don't you head outside into your backyard and see if you can find some food chains. If you don't have anything in your backyard, take out your stuffed animals. Maybe you can make some food chains there. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Life Science Shorts. Hope to see you next time.